Hello, Purpose Enthusiasts, and welcome. I am Tori Slaughter, and this is Divine Alignment, where we command our morning and take a closer look at our assigned Bible reading as we journey through the one-year Bible together. This week, we are walking through our assigned reading with a focus on intentional prayer and character development. As we use the scriptures, we will need, we will need, we will need the Holy Spirit to guide us and to direct us to bridge the gap between the natural and the supernatural, the gap between revival revival and spiritual maturity, which is the mission of the Our Given Purpose Ministry. There are many ways to allow God's Holy Spirit to deliver us from evil and keep us focused on things eternal as we create daily habits, serve in our church, get involved in community both in person and online. We will witness the power of God's word transforming us from the inside out, and we will embrace it. Hallelujah. There are four ways that you can interact with the Our Given Purpose Ministry, and the first is by starting your Bible habit and reading God's word each and every day along with us as we study the one-year Bible together. I am so grateful to each of you for joining us for Divine Alignment, but more importantly, that you are continuing your faith journey by praying, meditating, and studying God's word. On Tuesdays, we bring you live with Lisa the prophetic writer at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can tune in to get your questions answered as Lisa teaches writers how to organize, draft, and edit their stories. If you missed this week's Live with Lisa, please go back in and catch the replay. Another way you can interact with the Our Given Purpose Ministry is by listening to A Daily Purpose, the podcast that features over 20 contributing writers sharing their faith, transformation stories, and how they desire to be intentional in prayer and develop their character. A Daily Purpose, the podcast is available right now on all major podcasting platforms. And today's episode comes to us from contributing writer, Lindsay Capron. And finally, the Our Given Purpose Ministry offers a Psalm a day, which is a devotional following the one-year Bible reading plan. I hope you will use it to enhance your study time as well as sparking conversation with your friends and family. Please read a song of God's delight for his people, a journey through Psalms 87 at OurGivenPurpose.com. I thank you for walking this journey with with us. Let's begin by marking this time as unto the Lord, and let's go before his throne together. If you are able, adjust your posture, soften your gaze, relax your shoulders, take a deep breath, and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today with humble hearts. We are seeking your guidance and wisdom as we learn about the power of intercession and godly leadership and prayer. Father, open our hearts to receive your word and to be transformed by it. Father, we ask that you teach us how to pray, not only for ourselves, but for others, for our leaders, for our nation, and for those in need. Father, we want to continue to grow in integrity and godly character as we are aligning our prayers with your your perfect will, your perfect plan for us. We thank you, Abba Father, for this day. We thank you for this moment. We thank you for the opportunity to gather here in this virtual setting. And we thank you that we will gather with our friends and family and continue to spread your word. We thank you for empowering us, equipping us, and loving us with an enduring love. We praise you, Abba Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. To God be the glory. I greet you all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We started reading. I'm grateful to be on this platform, and I'm hoping that by next week, everything will return to normal. So first off, thank you so much for your patience. Thank you for your prayers. Your prayers have availed. We thank you so much. And again, your grace at extending it, it has really touched me and I appreciate it. So last week, well, actually yesterday, yes, yesterday we started reading uh, the letter to Timothy from the Apostle Paul. And I said I wanted to give a broad stroke overview. And so let, let's go into that, okay? Because this letter, I want to be able to look at this letter, not only objectively, but to be able to apply it, be able to apply the necessary components of this letter. So this is the first part, Timothy 1, that's the first letter. And this is a very powerful message from the Apostle Paul to this young leader in the early church. And this letter, it is a call to personal integrity. It is a call to godly living, and it is a call to faithful endurance. And so the Apostle Paul's words, he reminds us of our purpose and our responsibility as followers of Christ Jesus. And so the Apostle Paul, he begins by encouraging Timothy to stay faithful to the truth, to stay faithful to the truth. Amen. We're going to uh, turn to this in just a moment. I wanted to go ahead and make sure I have this up for us. Amen. And this is, this is, 
God's word is, again, it is so good for, for teaching, for correction, and for reproof. And this is where he is starting to encourage Timothy. And he wants to also warn him about the false teachings, which were spreading in the church. And so he urges Timothy to guard the gospel with a pure heart and a good conscience. So turn with me to 1 Timothy. We're going to look at chapter 1, verse 5, which we've already read. Uh, we read this yesterday. And the Apostle Paul, he writes, the aim or the goal, the aim of our charge is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. And this is the foundation. This is the foundation of our Christian walk, to love from a pure heart, a good conscience, and sincere faith. And we aren't just called to know the word, but to live it out with love and with integrity. And so then the Apostle Paul, he instructs Timothy on how to conduct himself in the church and community. And he also emphasizes the importance of prayer and intercession. And this is we read this today in First Timothy chapter 2. This is part of our assigned reading. And the Apostle Paul, he says, first of all, I urge, I beseech, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people. And so we are called to be prayer warriors. We are called to lift up those in leadership and authority and stand in the gap for others. And this is crucial for the spiritual health of our community and for the world. And so the Apostle Paul, as we go through this letter, this first letter, he, he finally, he talks about uh, leadership within the church and he encourages Timothy to choose leaders who are above reproach to choose leaders who are above reproach, spiritually mature, and also filled with wisdom. And in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, which we read tomorrow, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, Paul, the Apostle Paul, he describes the, the mystery of, of godliness. And he reminds us that our lives are a testimony of Christ's transforming power. So our character matters, not just for ourselves, but for those we are called to serve. This is so important as to when we are overlooked, and I use my air quotes, we're overlooked for certain positions within the church. I think this is a point where we can let self-reflect. Lord, let me come back to your throne you know, maybe I'm not acting spiritually mature. Maybe my actions, maybe I'm not above reproach. I don't want to lead anyone astray. I don't want to think more highly of myself than I ought to. And if people are, we're not talking about jealousy or envy or any of the other emotions. I'm talking about just from a spiritual perspective that there is, especially for those who want to serve, we know we have gifts and we know that we can be helpful. If we can only see ourselves as being helpful in one area and then not in the other, in another, then that's a red flag to us, that, or it should be a yellow flag. That's a caution. Because why is it that we need to be recognized? Is it that we need to be seen? Because then who are we doing it for? Because God sees everything. And I think that was something that helped me as far as being able to navigate what I do within, within the church, within, with being a media ministry consultant, with helping and doing that. It's who do I want to see this? Because if it's an audience of one, I want to make sure that I'm pleasing God, uh, Father, my God, if I'm making sure that I'm pleasing him, then anything else I do is a reflection of what he desires me to do as, on earth as it is in heaven. And so the audience and being seen isn't as important as it is, am I pleasing God? So I just wanted to, uh, to put that because I believe we can extract some of that from 1 Timothy. And to live that life of integrity, to be above reproach and to have that spiritual maturity because there's an urgency in the Apostle Paul's message to him, to Timothy. And we are also, we are called to be a people of prayer, okay? We are called to be a people of integrity and a people of truth. And so we are called to guard the gospel, to live out our faith with love and sincerity and to be faithful servants of Christ Jesus. And we will trust that he will empower us to lead and to pray and to live in a way that brings glory to his name. 
If we want to leave God out of a situation, then we might want to get out of that situation ourselves. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I want to greet you all. Thank you for joining me here on Facebook and on YouTube. Let's continue our discussion and dive deeper into the theme of intercession, which is the act of praying on behalf of others. Intercession is the act of praying on behalf of others. And it's also the role of godly leadership in those prayers. That's what we're going to talk about as far as intercession is concerned, the act of praying for others, and then the role of godly leadership in those prayers. Because here in this this day, <laughs> the, these days, it's so easy to get caught up in our personal needs and our desires when we pray. But God tells us to to think of things eternal. He calls us to a higher purpose. And it's not just that, listen, pray for yourself. There's nothing wrong with that, but we aren't just to, to pray for ourselves, but we're also to pray for the restoration, for the healing and for the deliverance of others. And so this act of intercession, it is such a powerful tool in the kingdom of God. And it's one that shapes not just those we pray for, but it also molds us into leaders who carry God's heart for the world. Hallelujah. We read today, Jeremiah chapter 30 through 31 verse 26. Hallelujah. And Again, just a fantastic passage because this is where we see God's promise of restoration for his people. And we know that Jeremiah, he is known as the weeping prophet. And he spoke during a time of, of great turmoil. Okay. No one is listening to him. It, it's, it's, it's messy. Okay. It's messy. And so the nation, they are facing judgment. Yet even in, even in the midst of their suffering, God promised hope. God promised restoration. And if you'll turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 30, let's look at verse 18, Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 18, hallelujah. And the word of God says, thus says the Lord, behold, I will restore the fortunes of the tents of Jacob and have compassion on his dwellings. The city shall be rebuilt on its mound and the place and the palace shall stand where it used to be, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. This is Jeremiah. He was not just delivering this message. He is not just delivering this message. He is also praying and he is also interceding for the people. And so think about this role that Jeremiah had. He was not just a, a passive messenger, but he was an active intercessor. Jeremiah was not just a passive messenger. He was an active intercessor. He was an active intercessor intercessor. He stood in the gap between the people and God, and he's pleading for their restoration. And for you and I, as believers, as Christ followers today, we are called to stand in the gap for our families, for our communities, and even for our nations. And when we pray for the healing, when we pray for the deliverance of others, we are participating. We are now participants in God's redemptive work. Now, what about when we intercede for those in authority? What about when we intercede for those in authority? That brings us to First Timothy chapter, First uh, Timothy chapter two, verses one through fifteen, which we read today. And this is where the Apostle Paul he is urging. He is urging us to make petitions and prayers and intercession and thanksgivings for all people, especially for kings and all those in authority. And so this reminds us of the importance of praying for our leaders, whether we agree with them or not. We don't have to agree with them in order to pray for them. We do not. So why is that so critical? Because the direction, I'll answer that. I'm glad you asked. Why is that critical? <laughs> it's because the direction of our leaders, their direction, it affects the lives of the people under their influence. So we are under the influence of these. And this is something we chose for ourselves. Okay. So praying for our leaders, this is an act of surrender to God's authority. We have to realize that God is ultimately in control. And so we acknowledge that he is ultimately sovereign. And so when we pray for wisdom and integrity and godly leadership, or the godliness in leadership, we are asking God to intervene in the affairs of our world. 
We are asking God that even though we made this choice long ago with King Saul, even though we decided that we didn't want to listen to the prophets and the judges, even when we decided that, that we still know that you are in control and we surrender and we submit to your authority. And so this kind of intercession, it shapes us into people of compassion and also people of responsibility. And then it starts to align our hearts with God's will for peace and righteousness. Hallelujah. We also read today, and I love that Psalm 87, it just adds another layer to the understanding of intercession. And so this Psalm is a song of Zion and it's expressing God's love for his people. Turn with me to Psalm 87. We're going to look at verse two, Psalm 87 and verse two. And the word of God says, the Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwelling places of Jacob. So this this is a reminder that he has of the this this is just a deep affection that God has for his people and God desires for us to be in communion with him. So when we pray for others, especially for their salvation, their spiritual well-being, we are joining in God's love for his people. But here's the thing, Intercession is not just about what we say. Intercession is not just about what we say. It's about how we live. Intercession is not just about what we say, but it's about how we live, how we go through moment by moment. In Jeremiah today, it talks about not arguing, but to pray. And instead of arguing with one another, we are to pray into, instead of lifting a fist, we lift up our praise And in situations, especially with believers, with other believers, that is our posture. That is the posture we are to have. So it's about the way we live, the example that we are setting. And it then it goes right back into 1 Timothy. Are we spiritually mature? Are we above reproach? Are we talking about people behind their back? Are we trying to create an atmosphere of, of distrust, of dislike, of, of wondering what's wrong with this person, of, you know, just subtly doing those things? That means we're not above reproach. That means that the way we view people is not through the lens of God. And when we enter into those conversations and even into those relationships, we need to, again, that's a yellow flag. That's something that we need to start removing ourselves from physically, but start to pray for over spiritually. Amen. Amen. So let's look also, we read today, hallelujah, Proverbs 25 verses 18 and 19. And this speaks about integrity in speech and in action, integrity in speech and in action. And so the word of God says, a man who bears false witness against his neighbor is like a war club or a sword or a sharp arrow. Trusting in a treacherous man in time of trouble is like a bad tooth or a foot that slips. Oh, glory. This is a reminder. This is a reminder that our prayers and our actions must reflect godly character. We cannot effectively pray for others if our own lives lack integrity. We cannot, let me, we cannot, or maybe we should not. We should not and we cannot actually pray effectively for others if our lives, if the lives we are living, if they lack integrity. And godly leadership in in prayer, it requires us to be a people of truth a people of compassion, and then a people of consistency. So how does all of this, how does this all tie together? The act of interceding, the act of interceding for others, it transforms us into godly leaders. The act of interceding for others, it transforms us into godly leaders. So whether you hold an official leadership role or not, Because it's not about the title that we carry, but it is about the heart posture that we adopt. It's not about the title, but about the heart posture. So if we are always broken, if we have never looked to God to for that healing, for the restoration, if we are crying out and yet we won't believe God is doing a work either in us or in others, and we refuse to let go of the past, 
that means we don't have the correct heart posture. We're not believing by faith that God is going to do it. That doesn't mean that we won't cry. We won't be grieved. I'm not saying that we won't, but it's very much a, it's either first or second Samuel where he says, how long will you, second Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul? I have not chosen him. We need to move on. We need to move away from this place. We don't need to ruminate on it. It's not helpful. It's not beneficial. And all you're doing is tearing others. You're making others wonder what the, what to do. They don't know how to act. You are really just, if I'm being honest, you are affecting the nervous system of those you have influence over. And if that's the goal, that's the work of the enemy. When we choose to be in discord or chaos or not sure of what a person's motives are, when we decide that we're not going to look back to the word of God to find out what is this person's purpose? What is the plan that God has for their life? How do I intercede for them? How do I show up for them? How do I turn others to, to God and to focus on things eternal and not on the temporary, not on my emotions, not on the things that I'm going through and how I'm feeling, but to focus on God and to help lift each other up, to take some of the burden away and not become a burden. There's a spiritual maturity in us that when we cross over into that understanding, it's not, it's always about gratitude. Okay. We, we, we must have gratitude. We must do things with Thanksgiving. That's part of the intercession, intercession that we are praying with Thanksgiving, with gratitude, with love, with compassion. And when we are looking at people from that lens, we do start to see differently. We are transformed. We will embrace the transformation that God has done in us because he is the transforming God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. So when we lift others up in prayer, we, we learn to see the world through God's eyes. And so we are not just, we're not just asking for that personal favor, but we are asking for the kingdom of God to break through. Oh, catch that. We're asking for the kingdom of God to break through in the lives of others. Oh, hallelujah. Listen, what does that look like in practice? Okay. What does that look like in our day to day? How, how does, how do we really live that out? Give you some, perhaps some, some maybe. So maybe that means that we set aside time each day to pray for, uh, specifically for a pastor for a government leader, or even for those we know are struggling in our community or in our family. Maybe this is how we put this into practice. Maybe it means praying for the sick, praying for the oppressed, praying for those who are far from God. Or maybe it means asking God to change your heart. Maybe it's the time to ask God, Lord, change my heart, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Ask God to give you compassion. And to give you patience, the patience needed to pray persistently. Ask God for patience. Now, let's take, I pray that you will take a moment and to sit with that. And then ask yourself this question, which I will put in the, in the comments, but are we intentional in our prayers for others? Are we intentional in our prayers for others? Are we praying for the leaders in our lives? Are we praying for the people who have influence over us? Are we praying for them? Are we allowing those prayers to shape us into the people of godly character? Are we allowing those prayers to shape us into people of godly character? These are just some reflection points as we are walking through these chapters. Because as we are coming down from this place, hallelujah, and we are preparing to pray, let's remember that prayer is both an act of intercession and an act of transformation. Prayer is an act of intercession and it's an act of transformation. Hallelujah. When we pray for others, especially those in leadership, we join God in his redemptive plan for the world. And as we do this, as we do this, our hearts are changed and we become more like Christ. We become more selfless, more compassionate, and more full of integrity. So I do want to challenge you this week and each of you challenge you today. And as you move through this week to think of one leader, one person in your life and one situation in the world. So one leader, one person in your life, and then one situation in the world that you can intercede for this week. 
that you can intercede for this week. So just even going through the weekend, the rest of this week, on into the weekend, who can you pray for? One leader, one person, one situation. And then I want you to write down the names and then commit to praying for them each and every day. And then on top of that, trust that your prayers will make a difference. Trust that your prayers will make a difference, not only in their lives, but also on yours, because now you're shifting the focus off of you and being self-centered because we can all be self-centered. Okay. But we take that focus off and now we're interceding. We are standing in the gap. Hallelujah. I pray this was helpful today. This is a great reminder for me. Let us go to the Lord in prayer and thank him for this time and thank him for this moment. Heavenly Father, oh, we thank you. We thank you for the privilege of coming before you in prayer. Father, teach us to be intercessors who carry your heart for others especially those in pers- in positions of, of leadership. Help us to be people of integrity. Our words and our actions should reflect your love and reflect your truth. Father, strengthen us to, as we are praying for the healing, for the restoration and, de- and the deliverance of those around us. Father, we want to grow in godly character as we stand in the gap for others. We know Oh, we know, Lord Jesus, that you are already standing in the gap and that you have sent us the Holy Spirit to help us. So we thank you, Abba Father. We thank you for all the ways that you continue to lead us and guide us. Help us to be more like you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. To God be the glory. Listen, intercession, godly leadership, this is where we become agents of change. Through intercession, And through that godly leadership, we become agents of change. And it's not just for us, not just for us as individuals, but it does happen for the world around us. So I pray that we can all commit to being intentional, to being intentional in our prayers and to walking in integrity as God calls us to. Amen. Oh, to God be the glory. Hallelujah. If you haven't had a chance to share this broadcast, please do so. Your timeline could be someone else's lifeline. Don't forget, A Daily Purpose is available right now, the podcast, right now on all major podcasting platforms. And you can read a psalm a day at OurGivenPurpose.com. Now let us seal this time and move through this day knowing that the Lord will bless you and keep you. The Lord will make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord will lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace, his shalom, shalom, peace. Glory to God. I thank you again for being here and I look forward to seeing you at 5.30 a.m.